So let's get our Bibles ready. I want to go ahead and open up to Genesis chapter 12. Uh, My sermon title this morning is Into the Unknown. Into the Unknown. We live in uncertain times. There's no doubt about that. That's an understatement. We are living in uncertain times and we're not sure how everything is going to proceed uh, for the summer or even perhaps the next school year. I hear rumors of this going on like this kind of off and on for the next two years. We just don't know the future, but we can all agree that we know who holds the future in His hands. Amen. I hope you're saying amen at home as well. Just join right in there with us. But we are uh, living in uncertain times. I'd like to start off with a, with a joke. We need to lighten up a little bit. I hear about the, the guy who was a DEA, DEA agent and driving through the countryside and he was stopping at particular farms and he found this one farm and the farmer was outside tending to his livestock and stuff and he pulls up into the driveway and the farmer said, howdy partner, can I help you? And he gets out and says, yeah, I'm in the area, I'm uh, checking the area for people who might be growing marijuana illegally. And the farmer says, well, okay, well, I don't have any of that stuff. He says, well, I'm required to uh, go check everywhere around, so uh, do you mind if I look around a little bit? He says, that's fine with me, but just don't go in that field over there. The DEA agent said, now listen here, farmer, I am a federal agent. I can go anywhere. This badge, and he pulled out his wallet and showed him the badge, says I can go anywhere I need to to inspect your farm. The farmer just said, whatever. So he goes directly to the part of the fence where the farmer was pointing, crosses the fence. He's walking along and he's looking around for marijuana that might be growing in the field. And he walks about 100 or 200 yards or so and he realizes he's been looking down on the ground so much he has not noticed the big red mean bull that's just a few yards away from him. And he's stomping his feet and snorting. And he turns around to see how far it is back to run to the fence. And this bull starts charging him. And he starts running as fast as he can. He says, farmer, farmer, help me. Your bull's chasing me. And the farmer yelled back, show him your badge. (laughs) This DEA agent was obviously going into the unknown. He had no clue what was in that field. He had tunnel vision. He was looking for one thing and didn't see the obvious I wonder sometimes if God might say of you and I that maybe we're not seeing the obvious. That we're too busy focusing on the fret and worry of this world. On that that which might intimidate us. The virus perhaps. Or other health issues. Financial crisis. I know many have said they've lost thousands of dollars and it hasn't been too long ago the price of Oil by the barrel had dipped below zero. I don't know how anything does that. I don't see how the oil industry is surviving right now. To know that there's some shortages on the shelves in our grocery stores. It started off with, of course, uh, the absolute essential toilet paper. But now even meat, uh, production of of, uh, things and the plants that are sustaining us for goods and services. Some of them are, they've been furloughed. The employees have been furloughed. They, they have shut down. We don't know what's in the future, but we know who's in the future. I'm reminding you this morning of Jesus' final words while He was on this earth just before ascending to the Father in heaven when He said and gave us the Great Commission to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He talked about he that believes and is baptized will be saved. In Matthew 28, he says, you need to teach and baptize and and teach whatever I have commanded you. But the thing that he says right at the end, he says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world or the end of the ages. Jesus is at hand. God is at hand. He's near and he says he's going to be with us. The Bible says, as was read just a moment ago in Deuteronomy 31, 7 and 8, when Moses summoned Joshua and said to him, In the presence of all Israel, be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. 
the Lord Himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you, nor what? Forsake you. Do not be what? Afraid. Do not be discouraged. This is Moses getting Joshua ready to take the reins of leadership because Moses is not going to be able to cross the Jordan River into this new land. This is going to be the responsibility of Joshua, one of the two spies that were sent out years before at Kadesh Barnea when they stopped and they sent the spies into the land to to see if they were ready to go in and take it or not. And only two spies came back of the 12 saying, we can do this. The others were saying, we don't need to go there. It's too intimidating. It's too scary. We, we saw what we saw on it. We're afraid. But Joshua, along with Caleb, had the courage to say, we've got God. And now here, 40 years later, Moses is saying, I'm passing the baton to Joshua. And you need to know what you've always known, but sometimes it's been hard for you to believe. God is with you. When we read Joshua chapter 1, we'll see where God personally speaks to Joshua. And he says the very things here, as is said in Deuteronomy, that you need to, be, you need to know that you can be strong and courageous And again, God kept saying to Joshua over and over again, I will be with you. These weren't new words to Moses. Moses can go back to the burning bush scene and understand when you read out of Exodus chapters 3 and 4 in that call to him to go to Pharaoh to say to Pharaoh, let my people go while Israel was in slavery in Egypt. God kept telling Moses constantly and I'll be with you. Quit focusing on your human inefficiency, your incapabilities. Quit focusing on your limitations. As a matter of fact, we understand it's a principle through Scripture that it is in our weaknesses that He is made strong. That's what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12. When he says, I am who I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. It's in my weakness that he's made strong. It's Paul that says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Y'all know that verse. And we need to understand that God is, is with us as much as he was with Moses and as much as he was with Joshua and as much as he was with Paul. God wants us to know today, I am with you into the unknown. I like the passage out of Psalm chapter 18, beginning in verse 28. If you have your Bible, look at Psalm 18, 28. I know we'll be back to Genesis 12 in just a moment. Psalm 18, 28. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. How many of you know that God can change night to day? How many of you know that God can convert mourning into laughter and sadness into joy? That's my God. That's your God. He can make things change. We have a God who the Bible says, we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Romans 8, 28. Picking back up here in Psalm chapter 18, verse 29. With your help, I can advance against the troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. We have a can-do God, amen? A God that can do anything. You can't put in a box. You can't put restrictions. You can't quarantine God. God will not be locked down. But in our quarantine, God will still reign as supreme. In verse 30, it says, As for God, His way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in Him. For who is God besides the Lord, and who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. Have you seen a deer run? Have you seen a deer sidestep? Some of us hunters have seen a deer hop. We have seen deer leap tall fences. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. 
My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. Look down with me to verse 46. The Lord lives. Do y'all know God is not dead? In the last month, we focused on the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We talked about the hope of the resurrection, the offer of the resurrection, the impact of the resurrection, and the message of the resurrection. We focused more than once in those sermons where Jesus says in John 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life, and we believe that. In verse 46, the Lord lives, praise be to my rock. We got something rock solid that's not going to move. It's immovable. Exalted be God, my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. This is David writing here when he's saying this. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me. We can think of one violent man in David's life, King Saul, who was jealous, who at one point threw a spear, aiming for his life and missed. Therefore I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David, and to his descendants forever. That's God. That's God. Let's go back to where I directed you a moment ago in Genesis 12. Abram, we know now later that his name would be changed to Abraham, but Sarai, who would be later Sarah, Sarah, Abram is given a promise by God, but there's a challenge, and God is calling Abram to go into the unknown. In Genesis chapter 12, we read this in verse 1, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. You heard that right. It's one thing to make a move, and I don't know how many of you have moved. How many of you have moved before, physically from one town to another? You've had to pack your bags, you've had to get the U-Haul, or, or whatever it took. But to do that at 75, to go to a place that he'd never seen before, go to this land I'm about to show you, God says. That was into the unknown. It was a call to the, go into the unfamiliar. Go where you don't know anything and you don't know anybody. This is very much, I think, what Moses must have felt at that burning bush and yet but he obviously knew some of the people that were there and that's why he might have resisted going back to where he had run out of scared to death and here Abram is being told to go to a place that he's never seen he's 75 years old but he set out from Haran he took his wife Sarai his nephew Lot all the possessions they had accumulated and people they had acquired in Herod, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. And there's a promise of his name being great, a promise of his descendants being great, more than the stars of the sky, the sands on the beaches, on the shorelines. God says, I will bless you, and I'm going to bless those who bless you, and I'm going to curse those who curse you, but I'm going to bless you. I will give you land. Later on in chapter 17, he talks about the land promise that he'll inherit He's called to go into the unknown. Do y'all remember the definition of faith? Let's look at Hebrews 11.1 1 once again. 
Faith is being defined here. It's the best definition of faith because it's a scriptural definition of faith. We know faith is a risk. We know faith is trust. We know faith is the opposite of doubt. Faith is confidence. But here we have specific wording on what faith is. And it says this, now faith is. And it's always been this, by the way, and always will be this. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for. Do we hope that the virus will go away? Do we hope that we'll all see each other again in this building where we can physically hug and shake hands? Tony and I air hugged this morning. Try it. You'll like it. Everybody get your arms out. Let's, let's just look at me and hug me, okay? Hug me. Oh, that feels so good. But I'm looking forward to a time where I'm going to feel the warmth of your handshake in the brace of your hug. I know some of you guys, I don't hug. Side hugs only. That's good. That's better than what we got. How about salute one another with a holy kiss? Who's in for that one? We actually had few people that raised their hands there. I will be glad when this all is lifted, we're able to be back to this, to where we're in each other's presence. I have hope that that's going to happen. I don't know when. I have hope that we'll be able to have Vacation Bible School this summer. We have all the things that we need, the supplies. We've actually proposed a date. As a matter of fact, I might mention here that the elders would like your feedback. I talked to Gail about this last night. Uh, I have proposed a date. It may be too early, but we want your feedback June 1st to the 4th. I know that the elders are not wanting to have classes until we get into June. That would actually be Monday, June 1st through Thursday the 4th. We're looking for feedback for that. Uh, we might could have that later on in the summer, but harvest will be starting pretty soon in June. So let us know what you think. I'll put something out on Facebook for that. But I hope that we have EBS. We are going to have church camp, Lord willing. We got an announcement from the camp board just the other day that uh, all the sessions that were scheduled in June have been moved to July. That didn't move our session. They're also shortening the days of camp. Uh, it'll be Sunday through Thursday this year, so there'll be time for deep cleaning between sessions and the water system can also recover. I'm hopeful that we'll have church camp. I'm hopeful that I'll get a, a real vacation that will have a place to go. My mom and I are just raring to go to Colorado and go camping. My whole family wants to go camping. I hope that we get to do that. But ultimately, I hope we're all together in heaven. And guess what? No face masks. No nitro gloves. Amen. As a matter of fact, we're going to have perfect bodies. Think about that. Absolutely no viruses, warts or moles or any of that, right? Perfect bodies, immortal bodies. I'm looking forward to that. Well, it says here in Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is confidence in what we hope for. Do you have confidence in your faith this morning? An assurance about what we do not see. You know what that's saying to us? That faith is is the motivating factor to get you into the unknown. That's what it is. It moves us from familiarity to unfamiliarity. It moves us into what we are tangibly able to taste, touch, and, and hold on to and physically see into an area that we don't know anything about. That's what faith is. It is our spiritual eyesight. It moves on to verse 2 to say, this is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Let me just again remind you that these verses are telling us that faith is not dependent on our eyesight. And the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, we walk by faith or live by faith, not by sight. And then when we move on down into Hebrews 11, you'll start seeing these men and women in verse 4, by faith Abel, verse 5, by faith Enoch, and verse 7, by faith Noah. Talk about going into the unknown building a boat that was bigger than a football field, long at least. 
and perhaps never had seen a rain yet, and God's telling him about a flood. Noah was told to move into the unknown as well as Abram and Moses, and he did what he did by faith. In verse 8, by faith, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. He could go into the unknown. Why? Because he trusted God. He had confidence in the Creator. He had faith. This goes on and on through chapter 11. We call it the Hall of Fame of the Faithful. You have Isaac, you've got Jacob, you've got Joseph, you've got Moses. But they had faith, didn't they? And then you move to chapter 12, and here we have chapter 12, verse 1. The very first word will indicate to us that this is probably not the best place to have placed the chapter break. Talking about English lessons with Sherry Swafford earlier, if you've got her on Facebook, we've been learning our grammar a little bit. We, we've been, we've been she's, she's learning us good, isn't she? <laughs> Do you start a sentence with a conjunction? Therefore, always refers to in light of the fact of what we just talked about. Therefore, it's the thought that has to have, I used a word the other day and I was asked to define it, so I guess i got to come up with a different word. But this particular verse, there's a prerequisite to this. That means there's something that's pre-required to understand the full meaning of verse 1 here. You need to know that in chapter 11 you've got all those faithful people. And then it says here, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on who? That was a question. Fixing our eyes on who? I heard you at home. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and perfecter of faith for the joy set before Him. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You want to know why we can go into the unknown? Because Jesus went there first. Even though it was something intimidating and something he dreaded, and he prayed, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus said that, and Jesus did that for us. He went into the unknown. And I'm reminded of the 23rd Psalm. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why could David write that? Because he had evidence that God's been with him before and has rescued him and revenged him. He was able to go into the unknown because he knew the Lord is my shepherd. And a shepherd's out front, isn't he? You don't drive sheep, they're led our shepherd is out front. And the Hebrew author says, our Lord Jesus pioneered and perfected this race. I picture him at the finish line and he's just saying, come on, keep coming. You can do it because I've done it and I'll help you. I'll empower you. You can do this through me. He's encouraging all of us to run this race. In conclusion, let me give you three simple things that I've picked up on the narrative from Abram's life in these other verses that we've looked at out of Deuteronomy 31 and Psalm 18 and the references that we've already made here to Hebrews. And that is this, number one, we can go into the unknown when we go with God. Go with God. Go with God with God. And number two, we can move into the unknown when we grow in our faith. You know, faith is a journey. It's a process. It, it's not, I know we think of it sometimes as it's a position or a status. You either have it or you don't have it. But the fact of the matter is, Scripture will indicate that there's increasing, increasing measures of our faith walk. It's not just a light switch you turn on and turn off. 
It is a, it is a process. The, I'm reminded of the miracle story when Jesus healed the blind man. He asked him, do you have faith? He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. As if he could grow in it and increase in it. We're told to grow in our faith. As a matter of fact, Peter writes this when he's talking about the Christian virtues. Add to your faith. And he goes through all those wonderful things that he writes about. That's indicating to us that we can grow in our faith. Our faith can be made stronger than it is right now. We need to go with God and we need to keep growing in faith. And I know for the last several weeks, many of you have had the opportunity and have used this opportunity to your advantage to read more of the Bible and get into the scriptures and to pray more with your God, right? You've given more thought. There's probably more people in our country over the last several weeks that have become more spiritually minded than ever before because they know they have to depend on someone greater than themselves. Do you trust government? Do you trust social media? Do you trust the media? Do you trust politicians? I want to tell you, God can be trusted. Amen? God can be trusted. Go with God and grow in your faith in Him. As a matter of fact, that same chapter we were in in Hebrews just a moment ago, chapter 11 in verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please Him. For those who come to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Without faith it is impossible Please God. Go with God, grow in your faith, and number three, give thanks to Him. Make known among the nations what He has done. Give thanks to Him. Give thanks for those who have survived COVID-19. Amen? Our sister in Christ, Linda, she's a tough bird. Having an immune system that was weakened due to chemo because of her being a breast cancer survivor, and then having the coronavirus and as is, is, uh, just resilient as can be. Hi, Linda. She's probably watching. She's been down in Louisiana visiting with her dad and other family members. And perhaps you've known of people that you've heard about that have fully recovered. Give thanks to God for that. Give thanks to God for the people that might have been trapped in a foreign country during all this time, but they've made it home safely now. Give thanks to God for that. Give thanks to God for the health that you have and the health of your family members and your friends. Give thanks to God for new life that's been born during these circumstances. Greg and Deidre Sixkiller are proud grandparents now. Give thanks to God for that. Amen. And look at the good. I'm not saying hide your head in the sand and, and not realize reality and the danger that really is there. It is real with this virus or any other threats that you might have thought about that you wanted to ignore. Those threats can be real, but be, give thanks to God for the good. And be po optimistic, be positive in what God wants you to learn from this. As I said several weeks back in the very first live stream we did, I stood right here and I said, I think God has something to say to this world, and I think God has something to say to this church. And I think He has been saying it. And I hope we've been listening so in Hebrews 13, verses 6 through 8, I will close with this. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Everybody say that with me. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ, I love this verse. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I just remember back to the impact of the resurrection message where I talked about, you know, the resurrection erases my past, it empowers my present, it endows my future. We have a rock, and he's constant. We have a Savior, and He's strong. And He's strong enough to save you, and He's strong enough to save me. We're going to sing this song. For those of you that are present with us, if you'd like to 
indicate a response in a way that you need specific prayer, go ahead and come to the pews that are in the front while we stand and sing this song. If you're at home, please don't hesitate to write or call us. Reach out to us saying, I need help spiritually. I need to get back on the right track. I need to know that God, no matter where I go, and no matter what I've done, He'll forgive me. And I need to know he's in my future, and I know he holds a future in his hands. And maybe you need to reach out to us, but if there's somebody here this morning, why don't you come as we sing and sing this song?